Hey there, AGA members. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redman. Hope you're enjoying our AlphaGo series today. Michael's going to review the 26th game in the AlphaGo versus AlphaGo self-play series. Before we get started, a big thanks to all of our AGA members who make these videos possible. Thank you. If you'd like to help support this content, and we really hope you do, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. Org. All right, Michael, we are back, raring to go. Uh, that last game was a doozy. What's the uh, what's the top line on, uh, on number twenty? We're 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 really plowing right into the next uh, the next, next half, half yeah. here, aren't we? Okay, game twenty six is a game where Black has this big moyo on the right side of the board. Okay, it's sort, of, sort of like a San Jose game, but it's uh, although the order is different, it's a bit different in some details, but it looks like a San Jose game. Um, and white has these, um, occasionally puts a stone inside the black moil. And like it's, uh, all these stones are sort of dead until they come back to life. So that's, that's the story for this game. Sort of dead. They're dead and white's just leaving them. And it's not really clear what white's trying to do. Um, and I'm, I'm going to try to talk about that, but, um, eventually all of these stones get reused a lot and very, um, so that's the main story I think of this game. All right, let's uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, we're having um, white playing. Actually, this is already a very unusual opening because mm -hmm. you, ha you have white playing this uh, three four point, facing the star point, mm -hmm. sort of sort of inviting a kakari, inviting sure. an approach. Um, and this is an opening that is pretty rare because the opening is supposed the kakari, the approach move is supposed to be very effective when it has a star point on the right backing it up mm -hmm. um so people don't like to do this although it has been in my experience i've be, i've had it played against me uh, by otake hideo mm -hmm. so that's that's a very famous player who has played it um but he usually just played it against younger players like i he played it against me i think i was a five don at the time um <laughs> and just trying to get them out of an opening that they feel comfortable with uh-huh um so it, it was kind of a special tactic for otake okay um, and very very unusual for other players um but of course that doesn't bother um alphago and as we see alphago is very good at dealing with the opponent's moyo um and again you see i put an a where um in modern go now people uh have started to play the low kakari at a Right. And so it's, it's become much more popular, but partly because pressing on the fifth line next is supposed to be a very big move. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that um, I don't think the computer programs like the high Kakari as much as low Kakari. How do you feel about it? I, I'm, I'm a fan of the high Kakari, but I can't really back it up with much more than I just like it. <laughs> well, just to put a few more moves on the board, uh, this is the way um, AlphaGo usually plays with white. Mm -hmm. uh, just playing this. And this has always been a popular joseki sure. for, um, among pros for white. White's getting about 15 points of cash mm -hmm. to start with. And um, a lot of pros just like cash to start with. So they, mm -hmm. they like cash anyway. And so um, it's, it's always been a popular op um, for joseki. Um, but I've been happy playing with this, with black with this. Mm -hmm. also. So, so I, don't, I don't mind playing with black. And the direction of Black's um, stones is good. It's it's going to work well with the two star points on the right side of the board. Right. Um, but like originally humans had a bias for white. A lot of professionals liked white more than they liked black, just because, because white the, has the territory. The cash, yeah. 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 And what? and now, yeah. And now there's a lot of computer programs playing it too. So I think that's that bias is getting even even stronger. It's basically confirming the bias. Confirming it, yeah. Yeah. Um, Just so, out of curi yeah. curiosity, yeah. what's what's the the next black move that that you think works best? Yes, that's why I was pausing here because um, it's a really interesting position. Yeah. The game the game move was yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and of course, playing at A would have been okay also. Right. Um, that would be the Joseki move. Um, this move is um it makes white's invasion at b less effective 
So huh. if white invades, for instance, at B now, it's going to be a very cramped position. Like this is the um, probably going to turn out this way. Um, and uh, now the upper side, uh, it's not very attractive for white to try to get into the upper side. Right. And also, um, this is a much better wall than you usually get when white jumps into the 3 3 point. Like if we right. compare that, we could compare that uh, with um, black playing um, black playing here. Um, and nowadays, you might see some people getting into the 3 3 point. You can see white has a lot more space in this variation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you compare to, to this one. Which is really, it's a very cramped uh, six point territory in the corner there. Yeah, it's all it's ever going to be. That's all it's ever going to be. Um, so, so you could say that this move that Black chose to play um, is stronger in territory, but of course it does leave some space in the upper side for White right. to jump in. Right. I, I like but, it, but it definitely is a little uncomfortable. It's a more fighting style move, it's, it's right. inviting a fight. Um, in fact, white could immediately invade. White could play one of those famous uh, shoulder hits. Excuse me. White could have played one of those famous shoulder hits, which uh, we're going to see yeah. in the game. Or white could go in somewhere in the middle, like um, like at A, or or even like this would be one point that white could come in um, with with the jump, a forcing move next. Um, there's a number of places white could come in on the left side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but AlphaGo didn't do that quite yet. Um, AlphaGo started with an invasion in the three-three point. Yeah. <laughs> what are you... And again, this is where you know we have hundreds of years of experience, um, accumulated knowledge that tells us that white should play at A or B. Split the side, right? You're right. Split the side, um, giving yourself room to extend on either side. Right. And to just about anyone, I would advise you to continue doing that. <laughs> 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 but if don't, you're a pro, don't, don't pay yeah. attention to the AlphaGo guy. <laughs> well, pros can try it and and fail because they jumped into the three three point also. also. Right. So um, if you're going to play the three three point, it's really a completely different um, algorithm, you might say, um, mm. compared to to what people are used to, and you have to do a lot of um, work just to get yourself ready to play this opening because um, it's a completely different game. Um, so black is covering on the side of the Moyo. And again, we talked about this a little bit in game 25. In this case, um, black's area in the right side and the upper side. So this whole yeah. upper right, uh, you could say it's um, almost half of the board, but at least a quarter of the board. Yeah. Um, this, this area is really important for black. And so as in the game, it's sort of expected that Black's going to um, play away from the Joseki in the lower right and take the side point here. Right. So um, when Black's going to do that, it's correct for Black to uh, cover on what we would call the right side. Um, but if, if Black is playing on the wrong side, it would be completely different. This is um, the Joseki that we play here has changed so much that sometimes you can play on the wrong side and if you play something like this variation, for instance, which is a very popular variation nowadays, you can turn it around. And in fact, the latter would be good for black. So this is a feasible option. Wow, wow. Um, this is played even when the latter is bad for black, in which case black will play this move here. Um, this, this leaves um, some Aji with that white cutting stone, like white can mm -hmm. come, at, come at points like this later, um, but white would be starting um, in the upper right area. I don't know exactly where. Um, maybe white would just um, jump in here. Um, but white does have some, in this case, white would have some Maji for that stone. But if the latter favors black, it's relatively good for black, I think, because, mm. um, in most cases. Uh, white might be coming in here anyway. Um, so I don't know. Um, maybe AlphaGo felt that the right side was a bit too far open, mm -hmm. allowing this white invasion. Um, it looks like it's a it looks like a fairly even game to me, but of course at some point black will have to deal with the latter. Um and the right side is white is invading the right side. White has plenty of room there. So um maybe that's why AlphaGo just played on the correct side, what we would originally call the correct side. Although it's changing, it still is the correct side when black's going to play away at this point. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like if black was going to continue with a move like this, um, that would still keep the wall pointing to the right side actually. But if black was gonna do this kind of thing, this would turn around the direction of the wall. And so um, in this opening, it would not be a good idea. This would be good for white. White's pointing mm. in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. And so, so when Black is planning on going into this modern joseki, um, this would be the wrong direction of play. But since Black's leaving it at this point, um, I think it's good. Okay. And again, to, yeah. So now this is the game move. White played the final the, the yeah. shoulder hit again. Um, I, I do want to take a quick look at this fight, which we looked at. Um, we looked at this in game 25 also, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it is becoming fairly common um, for white to do this sometimes. But again, black does have the hanging connection today. And I did a whole variation for this um, in game 25, actually. But uh, with the stone at B, black can um, fight fairly strongly in this local fight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, now in this game, the lower side is wide open also. So black's not going to sacrifice um, if you go into game 25 uh, in the SDF file, also I left a variation where black uh, sacrificed these three stones. Uh, but in this game, there's so much room on the lower side that black's not going to sacrifice those stones either. So right. black's just going to fight very strongly. And you actually see this kind of thing happening sometimes in the self played games. Some of the earlier games, too, when I didn't really understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, but white didn't do that. So it's probably a bad idea for white to immediately cut. But it is something that uh, this cut here is something that white is. It's one of the options. That, so right. depending on how the game develops, maybe white's going to be doing this at some point. But just a little fine point on that. I think uh, this is something we've talked about actually for years in the commentaries is this idea of not, I mean, the cut is there. Mm -hmm. But the timing is it doesn't have to be played, and a professional probably wouldn't play it right away anyway, right? Well, it, it's um, that fight that I was showing you up to yeah, this yeah. point. It's not so good for white, so white's not going to play it. But of course, that would change um, if there was a white stone somewhere around here, for instance. I see. I see. Uh, then that would change everything a little bit, and so white would um, once once stones get close to that, or even even far away. Every stone that is played could potentially change the outcome of this fight, yeah, whether it's yeah. good, or, good or bad for white. So it's something that the players are eyeing, at least. Okay. Um, in a human playing, they would be eyeing it. Yes. Um, so black pushes and white jumps. Um, so black extends. Now, this is a move where um, computer programs would be suggesting A to start with. Um, for some reason, even AlphaGo likes to play that sometimes. Um, mm. A lot of the programs like to play A, and you'll see it more often in professional games. At, at this point, if Black plays at A, um, White's probably just going to uh, answer in the corner. Um, but of course, in some games, depending on how the game develops, sometimes it's better for White to play on this side. Mm. And, and White has these two options. So the idea is that Black is probing to see which way White's going to play. Uh, if white plays this way, um, then it's a, a slight difference, like it's a slight gain for black, maybe. But okay. also, um, in the end game, when black plays moves like this, sometimes it's actually strengthening white in the corner. So there's a potential negative value to that move, exchange for mm. black also. Um, when white plays this way, um, there's this um, forcing move that black gets. And as far as territory is, con is concerned, it's best for white to play here. But then, of course, there's um, all these all this Aji from this side, maybe a potential squeeze um, with moves like this. This would um, give um, all of the rest of, of these moves from the outside would be forcing for black. So there's a potential mm -hmm. squeeze there. There's potential for um, the peep and and reducing white's territory this way sometimes. Hmm. It's, it's nothing special, but like um, there are some weaknesses to that. Uh, the biggest difference there is 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 Black's. Um, let's see, have I lost it? Yeah, I, I lost that variation. Let's see, I, I'm back here. Um, so when White plays here, um, and Black plays here, so the biggest biggest problem for White actually is um, the biggest gain for Black. You might say is is getting this Serrari in. The, this this forcing move will change the right side a good deal. 
So mm -hmm. this is this is the big gain, and the rest of the stuff I was talking about on the left side is is relatively uh, unimportant. So um, black in professional games up to this point, black would play that forcing move um, here when black um, had something to gain by playing that uh, Sargari on the second line. Okay. Um, and otherwise, black would not hurry to play this. But computer programs like to play it. So this move that this is one of the options the computer programs would be thinking, or maybe a, a move at B would be a, a logical move. Mm -hmm. It would be strengthening black on the upper side and attacking white on a large scale. So those are choices that I think black had at this point. But black extended. You can see black is trying to build on the right side. Right. So so white invades. Wow. Oh, it's no problem. Um, <laughs> this is easy <laughs> enough for white. Um, if black plays strongly, white is aiming for the attachment in the corner. Uh -huh. uh, so for instance, white can play a honey here and attach here. Um, okay. So this, this is going to give white a living tick. Uh, I made a variation here. Uh, this is one option. Um, black can uh, play this way, in which case white uh, will have a life. White can capture it A or B and will be alive. So this was relatively easy for white. Um, and you can see that when black plays B and allows white to play A, these moves on the outside that white played, they're probably a slight, um, a good a good exchange for white when that mm -hmm. area is going to be black's area anyway. So, so white's getting a little bit extra potential towards the upper side and the left half of the board. Uh, so, so that seems to be okay for white that variation. Um, so black protects the corner. So that's very logical that since the mark point was white's, white's, um, white was aiming at the mark point, you might say. Right. So black protected that. Um, now white will have no trouble living on the side. So I'm, I'm going to show you that. Um, white can crawl. Now if, it, any, if black had played this move by uh, on the second line, to cover on the second line, white would cut. Let's let's add a variation there, sub variation. If black plays here, white can cut here, and it gets a bit um, troublesome. Like if black pulls back here, white can get good shape here. Mm -hmm. And of course, white's going to sacrifice the one stone that white cut, but it's, it, white can make use of it. Um, otherwise, if black um, plays one Atari, there's still this move, which is threatening to cover on the second line. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, it's 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 going to be a bit troublesome for black. It's not such an easy variation for black. Um, if black tries to um, control it with this, this this is already threatening the second line. Like if mm. white had to white had to do that because coming on the second line immediately collapses. Mm -hmm. So white plays an Atari here. If black extends, now white's going to play here. Um, so at this point, even if black manages to capture the right side. This would be bad. Like it would be uh, the white's capture in the center is too big. Mm. Wow. And so um, to get back to this point, black's um, black's probably just going to extend here, and white crawls once more. Again, if black covers on the second line, uh, let's just go ahead and do it. It's still troublesome. Like there's still this Aji here. Um, that has to do with the fact that black has to capture the three stones. It means white's going to get some forcing moves from outside. It's going to be very easy for white to handle the right side group, sacrificing the three stones, of course. Because mm. you can see there's a cut that black yeah, has yeah. to deal with there. Yeah. So um, let's see, where are we? Uh, crawl. So here yeah. we are. So I, I, I would say it's easy for white to live this way. Uh, and black just avoids the cut by extending. And white can live on the side, and so this is already alive. It's it's pretty much alive, um, no problem. But that's not the way AlphaGo played. <laughs> of course not. Uh, it's too simple, you know. Right. Um, so since black already had these to to reason that out, I'd say that since black has this pillar of three stones, uh, let's see, I'll mark them. This this pillar of three black stones here, very strong, right? Sure. Um, white uh, is calling this exchange of this move and this move. Let's, let's just get rid of that. These, this marked exchange here, the triangle, right. 
Right. Um, White's saying that the, the upper right corner was going to be Black's territory anyway. So White's calling this a Kikasi. Uh -huh. And White just switches back to the upper side. Nice um, timing. So, so this exchange is supposedly a Kikasi. Um, some people would still have wanted to jump into the corner or, or closer to the corner at least. But uh, I think AlphaGo is calling this a Kikasi. Hmm. And moving back to the right side. Uh, but it didn't do that so simply because now you see White's jumped into the corner. Um, this is the game variation. I'm a little confused. <laughs> it's a it's a confusing move. Okay. Uh, okay. Now uh, White is not actually trying to live in the corner. No. Uh, although of course that's what happened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My head just exploded, but that's okay. Yeah. So um, black basically has two choices to play at A or B. Let's see what I put in the variation. Oh, I had black play there. So we'll ignore that. So black basically has two choices. So if black plays A here, mm. um, this is the kind of the book move. It's, it's the basic way for black to handle an invasion in the three, three point. Right. But white does have these forcing moves here. For instance, if white plays here and black plays here, white's gonna live in the corner. Uh, so this is just alive. Um, and if, if black plays here, then white does have some potential to play some forcing moves here or here. And that will make a difference when white does try to live on the right side. It's giving white yeah. just a little bit extra space. Right. So, so if black doesn't like that, if black doesn't like that, maybe black's going to play B. In which case, uh, we have a potential peep here. Uh, I almost saw that. All right. Now this is a bit troublesome. It's it's not quite alive. Not quite, um, but it's, it's looking not quite alive. Yeah. But white has moves like that or moves like this. And you can already see some potential for white uh to play some forcing moves from outside, maybe this mark point, for instance. And in a um in some cases, uh black could have to actually take that white group in the corner off the board if black gets around. Really annoying. Okay, um, so so yeah, annoying. Really annoying. I mean, black played the move to take the corner, but white still gets to play inside it. That's just uh, well, it's easy for white because the plan basically is for this stone to die. Right. And so it's it's hard to go wrong, um, especially if black's going to play it, uh, something like this. If black's going to play something like this, it's like white is not lost anything. Right. If black plays, um, if black plays the other move, if black plays something like this, um, it's a bit more complicated because there is potential that white could end up increasing black's territory, uh, what they call mochikomi in Japanese. Mochikomi. Oh, we should do. do oh, we give uh, this we will be do. our yeah. This will be in our encyclopedia series. A yeah. random encyclopedia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's coming um, up, folks. We're 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 working on on a, on a new series. We'll we'll talk about that. <laughs> So it's very, yeah, it's a very fine line, but um, since White is sort of treating the whole right half of the board fairly lightly, and <laughs> acting as a here, the whole thing dies. Maybe, maybe it doesn't make any difference. Maybe it's just the bet, the annoyance is going to be enough. Sort of sprinkling white stones around, like you know, yeah. here in the here in the here in the Northeast and in in, in uh, right. the U U.S. We we go out, we sprinkle salt around when it snows, yeah. just just like this. Just, okay. Sprinkle the white so, stones uh, around. So which do you think Black chose to do? Well, you kind of gave me a clue because you said that, that white should die, but white lives. So uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, e? Maybe C? C looks really weird. Um, that was just part of the uh, explanation in the, okay. in the SDF file. Well, so I like I, I like your, I like I like your move, the, the, the sort of cappy move. I assume that wasn't that wasn't uh, okay. Um, that was my move. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Let's, move. Let, let's do my variation first. Yeah. So I'm suggesting this and um, and this. Yeah. I like and that. Black, is, Black is saying I, I don't care if the corner lives, but I'm going to split right. the upper side and the right side yeah. and attack the center. This is how I would have played. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. Um, it, it, this is the fun way to play. But, um, <laughs> Must be why I like it. Yeah, but also actually AlphaGo played away also. Um, so, <laughs> ah! 
Are you serious? <laughs> How did I not see that? <laughs> oh my gosh, really? All right, you got to explain this to me. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. So, so White's going to live anyway, mm -hmm. right? And so White's not going to play again, probably because White was going to die there. White's not going to play again on the one White zone on the right hand side. So sure, why not play over? And it's at, at that that's kind of a hot area, right? You know, I actually have a a theory, a potential explanation for this move, <laughs> for <laughs> some logic. <laughs> Hit me with it. <laughs> okay. Um, somewhere around here is is a good point for black at some point. Yes. Is, yes. Yes. Is, yes. Uh, reducing the left side, and it's right. trying trying to make a large scale attack on white on the upper side. Right. Right. I meant to ask you about that earlier because that is yeah. that is sometimes a play rather than the side move. Sometimes this, this is actually one of the candidates for Black's next move. Right, right? It's, it would be what you might call a normal move. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what know, Black is quote doing unquote, here? Quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. So we we get into this position. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, White played to take Sente, so it changed. So so let's just uh, pretend White uh, ended with Gote. Let's let's. Let's do an old fashioned Jyotiki here. Okay. okay. Um, so then this would be perfect timing. Yeah. Like Black is, Black is going to give the left side to white and use this move to, to attack white on the upper side. Right, right, right. So um, although um, one wouldn't expect this to actually happen, um, this is a very natural flow of moves. So um, this is sort of the threat behind Black's. 3-3 three, three invasion. This is the basic idea, which White has to play in a way to avoid. Okay. So this is the um, this is the logic behind the move that I would suggest is happening. Okay. But of course, AlphaGo can't um, can't tell us, so we don't really know. But that that's my suggestion for some logic behind this move. Okay. Not that I would play it. <laughs> okay. So now. Um, yeah. Now white can live in the well, you white maybe can live in the corner. Like this, this would still be um, giving black a choice. But if black plays here, this, like if black plays on this side, then obviously white's going to get a big, big black threat. Right. If black plays on the other side, it gets more exciting. But white does get to um, live. Um, but you can see this is this is okay for black. I think. Um, because uh, black's being pretty efficient in getting some outside um, thickness, you might say. Right. And black's going to get the whole right side. Uh, in the process of living in the corner, white has pretty much killed this stone for the time being. It's kind of unsatisfying for white, isn't yeah. it? So white's not going to do that yet. So actually, by playing away, black has stopped white from playing this move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. It is. So instead, white plays here. I like that. I like that a lot. You like it? Well, I've I never do. seen I've never seen a uh, this move being played in a professional game. Like it's, if you look at the upper left corner, it's a shape that has never been seen before. Uh huh. Of course, it's it's a pretty good shape um, in regards to white's group on the upper side. It do, it has a good feel to it though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's sort of inviting black to jump out in between. Right. And so in that way, actually, it doesn't have a very good feeling to it. Hmm. Like, like the, it's just begging for Black to play this move, which is right. uh, a very natural move. It reduces White's left side. Um, I think it would be a, a good feeling move more to play something like this. That'd be more normal, left, right? And reaching out to save White on the right side while expanding the left side. Huh. So, you know, it's, that's a more normal looking move. Um, but of course, even in this case, the whole left side is not necessarily going to be white's territory. Black could right. jump in just about anywhere, and it's not going to die. And so that could be the reason behind white is just more concentrating on uh, strengthening the upper side and potentially putting some pressure on this black group. This black group is not um, completely connected up to the right side. Mm -hmm. So if, if white can uh, start playing, let's see, when did white do that? But uh, like if in the game, in the game, um, White played another move in the center. But eventually, when White does, starts doing stuff like this, um, this actually can connect to the corner um, by making the peep more forceful. 
and and that makes a difference in what happens in the corner mm -hmm, mm -hmm. having a stone here on the side uh this stone here it does make the peep more forcing right yeah so um there is a connection there by having this stone floating about in the center it makes it easier for white to follow up with moose like this mm -hmm. and and then that will um in turn that will make this move more forceful right and and give a um and, and just help out this stone in the corner and so everything there is connected and even that uh this white stone on the right side let's mark that one too even this stone on the right side mm -hmm. um is, is going to have more potential when white is strong on the upper side so white is just concentrating on strengthening the upper side so while i say it's it's a it's not the intuitive move um there's a lot of um reasons I can find for this move to be a good move. Right. So black jumps out and white strengthens the center. So white's just concentrating on this one, one group. Um, so it's, it's sort of unusual that white is playing, seems to be playing in a very logical, um, understandable fashion. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's not really out of this world in this game until later. Right. right. So now black, black is, um, this this move sort of makes sense too. Black is trying to cut off that white stone on the right side. Right. Trying to take it on a large scale, and threatening a hole. There's a hole in white's wall. Um. And white's um defending it in a, a fairly um. It's all fairly straightforward, isn't it? Yeah, it's straightforward. Like this, this would not just not work. Is it a ladder? It's a ladder even, but it, it's a it's a it's a getta too, of course. Yeah. It's white moves like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so white's protecting the center. Um, black adds a stone to the right. That makes sense too. These are all moves that um, a, a normal human pro would be intuitively playing. Right. And so white adds a stone. This is where it gets a bit queer. Um, when white plays this, this is um, what you would normally call a, a forcing move. <clears throat> it's threatening black in the lower left corner. Um, and so a human will automatically answer this. Mm. It's, it's forcing, right? You answer it. I, I mean, go, ah. uh, uh, now the lower left corner, um, at this moment, it's not as big as the center. Oh, no, of course not. Yeah, yeah, okay, right, that makes sense. So, so white answers that, and then black goes back. So, so, um, what I think is happening here is that the two areas, even when white has played this forcing move here. Um, the size of the center and the size of the lower left corner are probably very close. And so uh -huh. all of these moves are pretty much equal to each other in size. Okay. All right. So so I, that's what I figure is happening. And it's not as if it doesn't work. It, like it's, it's an okay way for black to play. This black stone floating around in the center um, is going to cause some, some trouble. Um, but of course, white gets Sente to deal with it. And you can see white pushes through, right? And white's uh, going back and forth too. Man, boom! It's like a pinball machine. <laughs> so I think that's another indication that the two areas are about the same size. Yeah. Um, like there's not a logic that um, could be explained in human terms. I don't think to make to to say why this is good to mm -hmm. a good thing to be doing. It doesn't really make sense, but it's not as if it's uh, completely nonsense either. And so now white peeps. And I think this was well timed. It's a point where black, yeah. uh, black could connect or could not connect, and so it's a it's a, a kind of a annoying timing. Um, like black would sort of like to play here. This would be this is the move that follows up um, black's original move here. This is the follow up move. And you see locally, let's make a variation for the local fight. Um, if locally, if white does this, uh, not only does white have bad shape all over like um you can count two empty triangles already yeah and white cannot capture that cutting stone and this final move that black has just played is in a vital point so black's going to win the fight in the center mm. so this is a very effective move that is the follow-up to the mark mark stone uh, but white gets to cut here black has to protect and uh and this is really sort of falling apart locally mm. so like black would play mm. here uh this is a key oh. point um so this is the variation that i um that i sort of uh figured out you might say um 
and white is alive with about 10 points in the corner. And the problem is that white is sort of holding together in the center also, because I've marked a C and a D. Mm. Um, white has a combination between C and D. In both, it can start with C and then play it. Uh, let's just make a variation then. Um, for instance, if white plays here um, and black plays here, then it's trouble here. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Because of this, of course. So this mm -hmm. is already trouble. Um, so black has already has when white plays at C, it's already trouble. Like black has to usually answer on this side to save the two stones on the second line, which means that that one black stone here, this this black stone, yeah, that's toast. Is, can, be, can get cut off. Yeah, and so that's why white is going to be able to hold the center position, um, and so that's good for white. Once white that's... has already ten points in the corner. Um, White's made good use of these two stones. Yeah. Um, um, this was a, a valid uh, sacrifice of two stones because White's got a lot in the corner. They're looking and, a little small at this point. Yeah, and White had, can capture these two black stones at any point, so White has an extra potential eye there. Yeah. And so this is good enough for White. So that's yeah. that's what I figured might happen if that black did not connect. And it's sort of my expression, explanation of why why the, the timing of this peep is, is very good. So black answers it. So white's satisfied just with that one peep because at any point uh, white can follow up with this move and this would just be alive at this right. point. Yeah. It's really nice time. I think the timing is uh, exquisite. I, I you, need, you need nerves of steel, you mm -hmm. know, um, but yeah. it's really you, lovely timing. You need super reading ability too. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so now you can see white is playing on the fourth line instead of the move that I was showing earlier on the third uh -huh. line. Uh, so this is a more defensive move. Um, and so again, um, it's really good that white got this peep in before white started uh, playing defensively. Because now what white is just trying to connect up um, the Sanders stones. So um, Later on, if white when white plays this way, and for instance, if uh, if we get something like this, obviously the peep would uh, not be forcing anymore. Mm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, so getting in this peep first was really very very good timing for white. And so black is going to play away, of course, uh, covering on the left side. That's a big move. Mm -hmm. And white lives in the corner. And that was huge, also. Mm -hmm. And now black is building on the on the right side. So for the time being, the upper right corner is alive, and uh, this one white stone on the right side is dead. And so we have a, a black territory on the right side here, mm -hmm. uh, and a few wh small white territories. Like there's a white territory in the lower right, which is about the same time, same same size as black's lower left corner. So the two corners sort of cancel out. Right. Um, and white has still has more than 10 points in the upper left and a few points in the upper right. So white has two corners there for black smoyo, which is bigger if we count in this territory. But of course, white has some potential in the center of the board. So it looks fairly, as far as territory is concerned, it looks fairly close. Mm -hmm. it, it, it sounds like you're maybe white, liking white a little more. I mean, white's got a bit more uh, cash plus mm -hmm. Comey. Well, I mean, who, who, uh, I have the advantage that I've studied the whole game. So I, I have <laughs> that sort of uh, biasing me. Um, it turns out the right side is not quite as solid a territory as you might have thought. Yeah. And so that, that's, that's where it changes things. OK. Um, because white's already playing this move. And so white's already reusing the marked stone um, with this, this exchange. Like, it, it's too late for white to be trying stuff like this at this point. This would just die. Um, and so, so this is sort of killed by the strong shape that black has built here. Right. With these three stones, black is going to be able to kill the white group, even if black just plays something very simple like this. So white plays on the third line. Obviously, if white connects up at this point on the third yeah. line, black's, yeah. white's going to have a have less trouble living in, on the side. So black answers here. Oh, black didn't answer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this was a forcing move. So black answers here. Um, and with this exchange, finally, and we talked about this earlier in the game, finally, this 
um, this move comes up. So as I was ah, saying there earlier, it is. There yeah. it is. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. This originally this was not working for white, but nope. at this point it has become a very effective move. And in this case, white is doing it in a slightly unusual way by extending immediately. Hmm. Um, usually um, you see white play here and then here. Yeah. Um, but I think what uh, the I think the problem here is that black is going to play Notori from above. And the left side is not worth it, so white's going to push out. And we get to this this kind of thing. Um, and it turns out these four stones on the on the right here um, don't have a very good shape to connect up to the left. For instance, if white keeps on pushing, there's this cut here, and uh, obviously there's a cut on the left too. So this this fight is a bit troublesome for white. Oh wow! Um, yeah, yep, yep, yep. So it's not quite working for white. So, so there is some trouble here um, in this variation. So white didn't want black to play that move, and white extended immediately. So this is slightly unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if black answers on the right, white's going to crawl for the next move probably. Mm. So black covered, and now the corner is slightly un under. Um, actually, if it's a Tsumigo problem. Uh, you could say that it's going to die. Um, right. But in actual play, like if white did something like this, uh, you'd have to worry about a fight to capture. So black black's in trouble too. Um, so maybe black's going to play this way, which would still not be completely alive. Uh, like it dies if white plays here. This is one of the basic uh, life and death problems that they say a shodan should be able to do, mm -hmm. and it's actually it's actually about five don sprints. But when you get to a shodan, you've probably seen it somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm and, sure all our viewers uh, knew know that one. And then there's uh, this variation, which is also supposed to be a shodan smigo, where black can play here. Black can cut the next move. Actually, tactically, it's better to play all these moves first and then then start the call. Right. But in either case, it's going to be a call. Um, so there's these variations. Um, where at some point black could leave it even um, and and play on the side, but white would have this liability left behind. Mm. So in any case, um, this is putting pressure on the on the white corner group, and it makes sense that white plays this to have a complete life. Now this is alive, and black jumps. White immediately clamps here. So this is a kind of this is where um, the marked stone. I'm going to mark it now. This is where this stone sort of comes into play because this is really troublesome for black. Mm -hmm. um, if black goes down here, let's see what the variation is. I, I made this, um, yeah, I had white play here. Um, in this variation, white has a forcing move at A, threatening to push through at B. Mm -hmm. And um, right. when sometimes it's not always forcing, but it, it's a it's usually a forcing move. like. If I go into the details, it could get confusing. But if we assume that A is always forcing, um, then actually black is already losing the semi on the right side. So this this black group in the lower right would just die. It's just gonna yeah. die, yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sad. So this is a troublesome variation for black. So um, black doesn't really have a good local move. Um, so black's going to try to sort of wait and until that changes. So black's going to wait for a chance. Like um, playing something like this and just backing up all the way would not be satisfying, because white would still have the cut here. Uh, white would still have, for instance, the even in this case, white would have a cut provided the latter favors. But at least white would have this move. Mm. This this would be double trouble because um, white's also threatening this move. And so that's, that's trouble all over. And so. Um, backing off from the fight here is not really an option for black. This move, it would just be more trouble. Um, more trouble the more stones black plays. And so black is just leaving it, and is going to start a fight in the center. Wow. Um, and this this whole thing that happened in the lower right here was a very effective attack for white. Um, this has scooped out the whole right side. And as I was saying, this is almost always a forcing move. So uh, this this marked white stone is pretty much connected up already. Yeah. 
It and just looks like white is shredded. It just looks like white is shredded that whole side. It's all diff it's got all, all gone. Black dust has something like 15 points in the upper right area. Man. So that was super so annoyed. Yeah. And so that's what I was talking about uh, when I said that, um, let's see if I can get there. Uh, when I said that this move is a move that, although it didn't work immediately, it's something you right. have to keep your eye on this move. Right, right, right. I see that now. Wow. Okay, we're back to the game. I'm remembering how to how to do this on KGS. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's it's been a little while. Yeah. Okay. So um, Black pushes through here and cuts. Now this is a really interesting fight because there are points where it looks like White can go for the kill, <clears throat> but it doesn't work out. Um, so White pushes through here. This is sort of interesting. Black, you can see Black is trying to improve the position on the right side. Yes. Here. Yes, that's White, nice. White pushes through once just as. Um, to, to make a Kikasi a forcing move. Um, I don't know really what the plan was, but Black plays on this side. Black's trying to improve the position here on the right. Save these. Um, let's mark the Black stones that Black is trying to save because these stones, there was a bit of pressure being put on them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, Black is helping them out uh, with, by pushing here on the fourth line. <clears throat> now, White would like to be able to just capture Black in the center. Absolutely. And so I, I, I tried to do that. And Black's going to cut here. And instead of trying to break out, Black's going to extend. Huh. Uh, Black doesn't have any good co-threats, so Black's going to connect that co. And now if White plays here, uh, this is really, uh, this is very immediately trouble. This is, uh, Black, White has already lost the game. Uh, lost the semi -eye. The fight yeah. to capture. White only yeah, has two yeah. liberties. It's, it's two liberties or three liberties. Wow. That's and, simple. And, um, I just made that one variation because I, um, I've i decided not to make a lot of sub-variations in the STF files. It's sort of confusing, I think. Yeah. Um, but just for a KGS here, I can make this variation, which is the way that White can try to uh, save the position. This is going to be bad, too, because Black can extend here uh, to get an extra liberty. Um, and White's probably going to... White has a number of choices, but probably going to answer here. Uh, this is probably going to be bad. Um, even if Black does something like this, uh, it gets really complicated. Um, but it, it's gonna, it's looking bad for for White. Mm. Um, so so I could go into the thirty move variation, but I'm gonna stop here. <laughs> um, you, guys, you guys can work it out. Yeah. Well, I probably don't completely remember it, but all of the variations I looked into, in some of them, uh, this this wall was getting in trouble. Because it's going to be isolated when Black uh, and, and Black's, right. Black's going to get some kind of a squeeze here, right. so it's going to be a squeeze. Uh, Black stones in the center will probably be killed, but that's okay for Black because these the, the marked white group is going to get cut off, and Black has a potential attack there. So that's that's the what Black is going to be aiming at here. So let's see where were we? Um, so in the game, uh, White actually played here. A shape move. This is a good shape move. Mm. Black pushes and jumps. And so it still looks a bit dangerous for Black. Black cuts here. Again, White does not want to try to play uh, the forceful attack. Like the forceful attack would be to play here. It's already bad shape, but never mind. Um, and play here. This would make it a lot more difficult for Black to escape in the center. Um, but it's also a very bad shape for White. Oh, oh, oh. In fact, in this case, White's already, already going to be dead. Dead, yeah. yeah. Dumpling. It's, it's the Pretty uber much. dumpling. <laughs> yeah. So that's bad for... Um, let's just add a few more. Let's see. Um, <laughs> it's not Black, getting any better, is it? Uh, Black can play here and connect. And if White plays on this side, Black has four moves, four liberties. To three. Or if White yeah. Plays, yeah. And and this way, Black's uh, going to get an extra liberty too. So Black's going to win the semi -I just directly. Uh, ay, ay, ay. So White plays the bamboo joint, obviously a better move. And Black gets out easily. But still, it's good for Black to play the solid connection. Uh, this move would be weak against this move, so it would be right. bad shape. Um, so Black plays the solid move. 
Um, let's just add a few moves to that. Like white plays here. Obviously, it's bad to play here because white gets to capture the one straight, right? Right. right. Um, so if black plays on the other side, now white's going to be able to cut here with sente because of the snapback. Yeah. So black. So so that's why the hanging connection is not good in this case. Black Interesting. Plays yeah. And white pushes through. So white's getting some profit on this side. Um, and black actually just throws away the cutting stone. So it's, it's sort of interesting what happens here. Um, it's not good for black to play on this side because white would just, this would be a huge liability for black on the, on the left side. Um, and black would get a, an a, attack in the center, um, but has to save the upper left group. You can see that the cut here is not working. Mm -hmm. um, actually white, yeah, white would just take two stones. This, this is not working for black. Right. So black would have to save the upper left, and uh, white jumps out. Uh, so this is going to be a fight in the center, but black has a big liability on the left side because the left side is not alive yet. Um, it's going to be um, tricky, even if black plays first here. Um, mm. Black doesn't really have that much eye space. But for the time being, um, so black has trouble on all sides. So white's probably going to manage with the center. So black just sacrifices the two stones. And it's sort of surprising that this is feasible for black, but black is getting, you can see that the right side of the board is gradually improving for black. Mm -hmm. So black is building on the right side. You can see that um, the, the problem with these stones here has been pretty much solved. Yeah. Now they're, now they're part of the, the framework of black's territory. It's actually a nice, a nice piece of uh, territory. Yeah, so so that's solved the problem with those three stones. Black's getting some territory here, um, and black will be getting something on the on on the upper right. But now now what's this? Uh, um, so that I I marked it up a little bit too much maybe. <clears throat> All of these white stones are coming to life suddenly. White just played the mark move, um, mm. and it's still trouble. It's still uh troublesome position here for black. So it's it's not as good for black as I was implying just now. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and I was, yeah, and it felt, it just, it looked really nice. I mean, black it looked again, so nice for a moment there, didn't it? But it immediately did, it white really did. Wow. So what's happening here is that if black cuts here, uh, white connects. Uh, now, now black has a choice whether to protect the lower side uh, or the upper side. Um, and I'm having black play here. In this case, white's going to cover. And white actually gets the, the cutting stones here. Jeez. So white would just get these stones because trying to save them would just fill. Yeah, 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 yeah. This would lose the semi. Right. Um, right. So black has to, so this would be good for white. And to do a sub variation, like if black plays this way, black's going to have trouble with this cut. Um, because if black answers on this side, white's getting this this side. Mm. And so there's that problem. So so black's in trouble on all sides because uh, it gets really complicated, but that's that's the basic story. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see um, that. I mean white's white stones are just really working. Mm, so this is this is trouble on this side. Yeah, black's losing the, the fight there. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, okay, something like this. So black's losing that fight. Black, white has four uh, an extra liberty on the on the side mm -hmm. fight, and so that's a lot of trouble. So what black did <clears throat> was instead of cutting on the fourth line, <clears throat> black sort of backed away a bit, <clears throat> and this way uh, black is threatening. Like if white plays something like this anyway, black can make two eyes, so that would solve most of black's problems. <clears throat> And it would also be good because it would be cutting off, cutting off these stones from the corner. Mm -hmm. You remember white had the potential connection up to the corner. Yes. That's gone now. It right. means that when white continues with something like this, now this is a genuine trade because black's actually going to get those stones. Right. This is good for black actually. So that's the plan between the plan behind this black move. And so we got this trade. Again, um, when white cuts here, if black answers on this side, right. 
Uh, actually, black can win the semi here, but there's going to be trouble in the center now. Uh, this whole black oh, center group is in trouble. Wow. Yes, it is. Uh, if we have this happen, uh, black has to be really careful of the connection here. Um, this is maybe the strongest choice that black has, but eventually uh, A and B have become EI, and the center mm -hmm. group or the lower side group, one or the other, is, they're going to die. Uh, you can see white already has five liberties, so the fight against black on the lower side is going to be an easy win for white. Wow. You follow that? It's yeah, it's yeah, really it's amazing to me how white in this really small tight area is is able to just I mean it's just totally maximizing Aji. You mean yeah, I agree completely. And you, wow. you see you remember wow. uh I'll, I'll just leave the one marked zone. This zone is not completely dead yet. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still on the board. And white's gonna be making use of these stones in the center once more. <laughs> Uh, once or twice more. It, it's really amazing the way uh, AlphaGo can reuse stone. So white's already broken into the right side. Yeah. Uh, this move, this is one of the um, values of giving up the two marked stones. Let's mark two stones. Um, one of the uh, benefits of giving up these two stones is black is getting some territory on the left side. So that's one of the added values for black. But now um, we're going to see what happens here. Uh, white pushes through once. And you can see white is connecting up to one stone at least. Black cuts here. And now white connects here. White's still making use of the marked stones. And they, black still has to deal with it. Uh, because if black leaves it, let's see, I've done a variation. If black plays away, mm -hmm. white's gonna uh play that white's gonna play an Atari. Now, usually this Atari here, um, without the connection on the second line. Without this move here, up to this point, playing an Atari there would have been an overplay. White's just going to die here, mm -hmm. get cut off. So this this would have been bad for White. So what this move is doing, uh, when White plays here on the second line, White is actually setting that up. So if Black plays away, White can play this Atari. Um, and Black would like to be able to play here. But this is going to be a disaster for Black, because White's going to play here. And you can see already, like if if something like this happens, you can see that white's winning the semi because wow, swallowed. Wow. And so black plays here. This is a good Suji move, um, but white's going to connect, and then push through this side. Yes, yes, right. And now it's going to be a fight to uh, race to capture with the center. Yep. Uh, one move difference. Oh, is it that close? Wow. So white has five liberties. Um, black actually has just uh, four. So it's sort of mm. hard to understand. So I'll fill a few liberties just to show. Um, black starts filling liberties. And you can see white just one by one move. Wow. And so that was a win for white. So that's what white is threatening to do. So black has to play another move to deal with that. So black answers. So white comes again. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's just really having his way with the uh, poor old black. Now white is threatening to push through here. Yeah. So black answers that. And you know, after all this play two submissive moves. Right, yeah. And so now finally <laughs> uh white white cannot play this move. Now now this would just die. So finally white's going to play the tart. And so that's making uh use of the stones to a great extent. Um this is what pros are good at doing. But you can see that AlphaGo is taking it to an extreme here. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really so white, sort of redefined that. Just starting with this stone on the right side, and then the next move uh, playing here, forcing to do that, and then continuing with the cut here. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And all of these stones, um, all of the stones are being used like 100%, 200%, like making full use of all of the Aji. And you might be surprised to know that it's still a very close game. It's it's that, not as if this is giving White a huge lead, right? Um, and the balance of territory is is not all that um, one sided. So White plays in the corner and protects the corner. This was a, a sort of a weak point here. So White's protecting that, and Black. Uh, okay, this is a forcing move, and Black plays. This is where I would have played at A. Huh? Um, yeah, yeah, I like your move. But 
I like my move better. Um, there is some reason behind this move that comes becomes clear in a few more moves. This is just a forcing sequence here to get this move in. Black is, um, this is actually threatening a co in the corner. Like if white, white protected the corner, um, but if white plays away, uh, black can play one of these two moves uh, here or here. Actually, usually this one works too. Right. Um, this, this is uh, the better suji and it's going to be a co in the corner. So black can make this co in the corner. So white answers that. So what black has accomplished here is black is making a connection at A to strengthen black's group on the upper side. Um, so black's just reinforcing here a little bit. It's a sign that black is heading for a showdown here in the mm -hmm. center of the board. Black, now black reinforces the upper left group a little bit. These are all uh, forcing moves that black had the right to play. And so uh, the whole this all um, leads to this move that black just played. So there, you could say that this move has a better balance with the stone here. It's, it's easier for black to connect up at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, <coughs> so this this is the reason I give the, for black's Kosumi, the marked Kosumi, mm -hmm. um, although I would have played the knight's move. Mm -hmm. Now, if white um, tries to cut black off, uh, this becomes a key point. And there's a question of what happens on the upper side um, and how white uh, divides the two black groups. Like if white plays here, um, black's already alive in the upper right because uh, black has an eye, black has a, a potential eye here. Right. And, and black can play at this point to make a life. Right. So that's that's why I have white doing the jump, which puts more pressure on that black group. So in this case, black is going to answer that. And um, there we go. And that's one of the here. timing. Um, and black can just play away because this group is alive. It's, it's already got one eye at D and one eye. Black mm -hmm. can peek at C to make another eye. So, so um, that that upper side where black has played a peep at, at B, it already has an eye. Right. It can't be killed. And and black has an eye at D also. So it's it's alive. So that would be really bad for white. So instead, white answers mm -hmm. submissively. Black has to connect up. And now white plays this way, which is not as strong towards the upper right as A was. But for instance, um, now it gets a bit crazy. Um, at this point, uh, black quarreled here. And as I was saying, white's move here is not actually forcing against the black group. But when we have this position, which is more calm and heading into an end game, uh, white's next move, like if black plays here, to make a life on the left, or this is actually a pretty big move. If white plays that way, I mean, if black plays that way, this is a very big end game move, which white would be playing in sente. Mm -hmm. So black has to make a life on the right side and white's getting some territory in return and just pushes here. This would be an easy win for white. Mm -hmm. And so it turns out white's ahead at this point already. So in the game, um, Black actually just played. This is a huge territory move. Uh, as I was showing you, it's bi it's a big end game move that White can play right. with Sente. And White uh, forces with this. And then White gets to push the Black group around a little bit. Um, so this is a point where um, this move is actually, um, it's, it's uh, really heading for a showdown at this point and Black is taking away his own eyes its own eyes. Uh, like black could live by playing here uh, like this. Black has an eye on the left side. Right. Um, and black has, let's see, I, I went a bit further in the in variation. So black has an eye at A and a potential eye at B or C. Right. So the game move is actually taking away that eye at C. It's um, attacking, attacking white? It's attacking white. Yeah. And so uh, white cuts black off. And so we're sort of heading towards a trade uh, with white taking the group at A and black taking the group. Yeah, at a. I was just trying to calculate that. Wow. It's big, isn't it? They're both it, big, but actually big. the black group is, is bigger. So now black is trying to make some trouble in the center. Uh, you can see this is actually losing points in the lower left corner because uh, now white can play this move. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So black's sort of going beyond the point of no return at this point. Um, so black tries to make something out of that. 
Um, and this is going to be, uh, it could be a kind of a secchi. Um, like if black, uh, let's see, let's have black um, do it. Let's see, the game move was here. Um, black could have cut here. Um, white would probably just extend. And yeah. you can see because yeah. of the black cannot push through and cut here because of this move here. Right. And so at the best black can maybe get a sicky, maybe even not that. It's not really working for black. Oh man. So in the game black played here. Yep. Yep. Oh, this is the variation where black has a potential sicky. Sorry about that. And here, um, white has a lot of issues with uh Domin's Murray, a lack of liberties, but um it's holding together. Um, because white can potentially capture the black stones in the center, or white can play here to capture the corner. So it's not a big deal. So the white group is okay, and the black group is getting into trouble. Um, we can see that AlphaGo is starting to play these moves, which are sort of indicating that black is not finding any good variations. Right. Um, and black finally goes after the white group in the center. So um, so this is where the game ends, actually. Uh, so let's just make a variation for that. Um, black can peep here and play here. Uh, I just did that peep to make it a different variation than the actual game. Mm -hmm. um, but all white has to do is make sure of this eye, this extra eye. So white could play something like this. And white has two eyes in, in the upper side. And black has only one eye. Like this, this group has only one eye. Um, it can't make a second eye in the center. Nope. So nope. white would just uh, play some safe move like this, or it does. White could probably even play a white. And so black's group is a lot bigger. This is a big win for white. It's huge. Yeah. So they would be searing the board half and half, but uh, white would win comfortably. Wow. Oh my God. It just keeps. It just the 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 white white just really. White really seemed to have a nice plan here, right? I mean, I just, the way White handled and, and it sort of resold its stones, Those stones over, on the right side. over again is and just you can see mind boggling. The, the original stones, two out of three, are still uh, the stones that we thought White had sacrificed. Like there's, uh, there's these three stones that were they're just sort of plopped into Black's territory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two of them survived. <laughs> And you know, it's, it was sort of amazing watching them live and die so many times. Um, but it was very, yeah. it was super, um, super efficient the way White reused those stones. Huh. I'm almost wondering, and I am probably just projecting or hallucinating or you know whatever. But it's almost feeling. I know that these are still the AlphaGo AlphaGo games, but I'm, you know, just in the sort of the the incredible reading strength here it's it's almost starting to feel a little bit zero-ish i mean we we you know we we haven't done a zero yeah. game for a long time but it, yeah. are, you, are you feeling that too that that's it's just close. of course it's a different um it's supposed to be a different program no i know yeah but it's it, i think the calculating ability um it, it's my impression is that it's getting better than it was um even um in the master series where master played against the humans Right. That could be that the games have longer time controls, but um, uh, the calculation is much more, uh, much better, much more deep, and it makes the games much more complicated. Yeah, like the master games against humans, they were pretty simple, partly because um, master simplified things from my viewpoint, and because it it had a lead fairly early in almost mm -hmm. all of the games, mm -hmm. it it, um, it was probably reasonable for it to be, what I call simplifying. Um, right. I, I think the uh, the Deep Mind team had an objection to that, <laughs> the way I put it. But yeah. Right. We should mention though uh, a little bit on on the book. The uh, Deep Mind folks are contributing a, a very nice introduction to the to the AlphaGo book that we've been working mm -hmm. on. So. Looking uh, forward to that. I haven't yeah, seen it. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. So it's good. Well, we'll we'll have some more news on that. Well, uh, terrific and and just mind blowing uh, game. Thank you so much, Michael, for putting in all the time, uh, both analyzing it and uh, and explaining it, particularly explaining it. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> uh, as usual, before we uh, wrap up, we do want to give another uh, big shout out to all of our AGA members uh, who make videos like this possible. We really, really appreciate it, folks, and uh, keep those uh, support coming. Remember, uh, if you would also like to support this content, uh, all you got to do is uh, join the American Go Association, usgo.org. It just takes a few minutes, and we really, really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you all next week.